Now in this video lecture, we'll discuss uh, the relationship between almost sure convergence and convergence in measure uh, through subsequences as well. First, as in the title, uh, convergence almost everywhere in a subsequence. So this proposition, it says uh, we have seen examples before of um, sequences that converge uh, in measure, but not almost everywhere. And what the proposition says is if we have convergence in measure, then there is a subsequence at which we converge almost everywhere. So here's a sequence of functions, fn, indexed by n. And if we choose just a few of these, n's, or still infinitely many, but not, not all of them. So now this will be indexed by k instead of n, because we're going to take not every n, just the if we take just n equal 1, 2, 4, 8, for instance, then what we are taking is nk to be, um, that will correspond to k equal 1, 2, 3, 4, if we make nk equal 2 to the k minus 1. So in general, uh, this can be any subsequence as long as it has infinitely many terms in it and is increasing. And through a subsequence, we have convergence uh, almost everywhere. To prove this proposition, we're going to consider this set here, A indexed by both N and K, uh, where N and K are just any two uh, natural numbers and it will uh, be the following. If it will be the set at which the function fn minus the function f, the difference, the absolute value of this difference is larger than one over k. So for each k larger than n, we can take a number nk, and we can even take this number nk, we can make it larger than nk minus one, just to make sure this uh, sequence is increasing, uh, such that the measure of this set, we can make this measure less than one over k squared. Why can we make this measure larger than one over k squared? Well, for each k fixed, once k is fixed, this is playing the role of epsilon, this one over k here. And convergence in measure, it means exactly that the measure of this set converges to zero as n tends to infinity. And since it converges to zero, we can uh, we just need to wait long enough and we'll find um, k and k. It depends on k, just like here it depends on epsilon, such that for every n larger than nk, the measure of this set will be bounded from above by k squared, one over k squared. And now what we do is consider bk to be the set that is now indexed only by k. And why that? Because instead of n, we are going to take the nk that we got from here. So it will be to take nk, k. Okay. So bk, if you want bk, will be the set fnk minus f larger than 1 over k. And now we notice the following. This measure of these sets bk, because each one of them is bounded from above, by one over k squared, this measure is summable. And then we can use Borel-Cantelli lemma one to say that bk, the measure of the union over k, the measure of the limb soup in k of bk, is zero. That is exactly borel cantelli lemma one. And what is, does it mean for this measure to be zero? It means 
the measure of the set fn minus f larger than 1 over k infinitely often is 0. And that, that implies that then fn k converges to f as k converges to infinity because this uh, this measure this one over k here will be below epsilon for every epsilon positive as we take k large enough this will be below epsilon so and and if this since this measure uh, the probability that we are larger than any epsilon infinitely often is zero by this equivalence between convergence almost everywhere and the measure of this set being zero, uh, we can conclude that Fn converges almost everywhere to F. Uh, 